Good morning, everyone. I am Victoria Capalgo. I'm Regional Sustainability Manager for Louis Dreyfus Company. And we're here to formally launch our regenerative agriculture program. Thank you for being here with us. This program is being officially launched. You know that regenerative agriculture means a comprehensive perspective of management of our work in the implementation of specific agricultural practices. We try to store carbon and mitigate climate change to improve soil health, to resupply our profiles with water, improve biodiversity, and especially support long-term profitability and resiliency for growers. This has been thought especially for Argentina and with major partners such as the Nature Conservancy, Peterson, Syngenta, Nestle, and Banco Galicia. This is undoubtedly one of the most relevant steps on our way to global sustainability. This is our commitment, and we call it one step towards a new agricultural revolution, towards a new age. This is a new agricultural revolution. LDC launches its new regenerative agriculture program, an initiative that sets the beginning of a new age in agriculture. In this new age, sustainability is our priority. With the support of LDC and the cooperation of important participants from all, throughout the value chain, we're transforming the way in which we produce our food. Using advanced agricultural practices, we restore and enrich our soil, we take care of water, we promote biodiversity, and we reduce carbon footprint. Together, we support farmers so that we are all together part of the revolution of the change towards a more sustainable future with a program that will contribute to a more efficient and profitable business. Let's keep joining our efforts to create fair and sustainable value for the current and future generations. Join the regenerative agriculture program of LDC and be part of the revolution. And now I'd like to invite you to listen to a panel. So I will call the members of the panel. On behalf of Breyfus, there is Juan Jose Planchars, who is a global CEO and head for Latin America. I'd also like to invite Diego Sibulka, who is Peterson, director for the Southern Cone, Marcos Bradley, general director with Syngenta, Giancarlo Aubrey, CEO with Nestle for Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay, Hernan Bush, agribusiness manager with Banco Valencia and Andres Silvestre Bernice, leader for the zero conversion strategy for the Chaco region. Besides describing his role as part of in our program, he will also be introducing the members of the panel. Andres, the floor is yours. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Dreyfus, for inviting us to participate in this very interesting initiative. I am Andres. Silvestre, I have a long history with this organization, so I feel at home. And I also feel that what we are doing at Nature Conservancy and with this program is very much related to what we have been doing at Apresid, our hosts, and at other organizations that for many years now, based on science, have been trying to join these two worlds, production and the environment. At some t point in time, we thought they were different words, but I'm pretty sure all of you know that this is not the case, that we can work together. The Nature Conservancy, TNC, is a global organization that has existed for over 70 years, is present in over 70 country, it's a, an environmental conservation organization focused on carbon, water, biodiversity, the same goals that many of you may have. The solutions we look for are nature-based solutions. 
We're interested in preserving the environment since life depends on it, but the life includes human beings. So this is an organization that considers human activities as part of what we have to preserve, promote, and communicate. And this is why everything we do is done with local players so that we can find specific solutions apply to the local reality. And this amazing panel I will moderate today shows the kinds of actions we're involved with, involved in. Here, we have members of a large part of the production chain in Argentina. This program is so focused on soya bean and corn, but there are other initiatives that lead us to work together with local players. Going back to our panel, we have a major panel with global reference people. So I will give the floor to them, since they are the ones who know and who will tell us what this program is about. So we will start with Juan Jose Blanchard. Juanjo, what is your role as a global leader of Ms. Dreyfus, a company is present throughout the value chain from the source to the end consumer. You're also present in many other chains. Which are the drivers that encourage Dreyfus to launch these programs, such as the one we are launching today? And even though this is a global program, why have you decided to launch it here in Argentina? Juanjo, thank you, Andres. Thank you, Andres. We're very happy with this launching. We're leading with LDC and with this group of colleagues, companies, and panelists who are sharing this launching with us. What encourages us to do this? The, when we talk about regenerative agriculture, we think of the world change that's changing demand, changing the paradigm, and consumers are requesting projects with a lower carbon footprint, with a greater biodiversity. At the consumer levels, the new generations are clearly demanding more sustainable products, traceable products. This is not something we are making up. This is a change that is coming. There are financial institutions demanding regenerative agriculture products. Agriculture is changing too. Production costs are increasing. Volatility is pervasive. We're seeing what's happening today with the prices of agricultural commodities going down. Costs are going up, producing soybean in Argentina. Well, 20 years ago, nobody would have thought that you might produce soya bean here and that in order to produce soya bean, you have to fertilize it. And today, nobody can think of producing soya bean without fertilizing. And how do we become more resilient? And I think that regenerative agriculture is a tool that favors that resilience, creating more stable systems that are more sustainable in the longer term. This is a new agenda that we have to promote. We're convinced we have to push and lead this agenda. As I was saying, costs are very high. If you analyze growers' economy, well, it is very difficult with soybean prices around $10. We would never have thought of these prices. But when you study the cost of fertilizers, those costs have not gone down. But you know that if you invest in mycorrhiza in the field, you will have available phosphorus because, it's got, because it becomes soluble and you don't have to invest in fertilizers. Well, this is not something that happens, happens overnight. It's part of a process. And, as, and we want to lead this regenerative agriculture agriculture change. And it's not just us. On the one hand, we have growers, but we also have clients to whom we provide raw material. Here we have the case of Nestle, who in turn provides products to consumers who demand products with a lower carbon footprint. 
after over 120 years in Argentina, we need to lead this initiative and to interact strongly throughout the value chain and, in turn, to commit ourselves to reducing our emissions and reducing the, our impact on climate change. Well, those are the main drivers for us. Why Argentina? Well, as a grower, as a farmer, if you think, if you look 20 years back, I have been traveling the world for a long time. In the past, Argentina was a leader in no-till. Today, in Brazil, Mato Grosso, everything is no-till. They adopted our technology, and this is a proof, is an evidence that Argentina has been a pioneer and has been very resilient, and I think this new concept of regenerative agriculture will be adopted by farmers. And maybe in 15 years' time, we will be saying that Argentina was a pioneer in the development of new sustainability techniques. That's the reason for us choosing Argentina. It's so nice to hear you especially coming from somebody who is so experienced, who has been traveling all over the world. Those of us who work in the productive sector are proud of this. And it's nice to see that what we do here goes beyond our borders. There is not only mess in Argentina. We also have an amazing agricultural sector. And as I was saying at the beginning, we do not only have Dreyfus, there are other important companies here. I will ask the representative of one of the most important food companies in the world, Nestle, to talk to us. Mr. Audrey is a representative for Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay. What are the trends you're seeing at consumer levels? Because you represent the part that's closest to consumers. And this regenerative agriculture project by Dreyfus, to what extent that does it support Nestle sustainability programs? Thank you very much for your questions. Consumers are at the core, at the center for all companies, and Nestle is no exception. Today, consumers are increasingly interested in knowing where the ingredients, the products, the raw materials, the packaging materials they buy come from. Regardless of whether it's a food company or any other companies, because eventually some products are become waste and people want to know where that waste goes to. In Argentina, there is a counter survey carried out last year Three out of 10 consumers are strongly interested in the origin of raw material, packaging material, and what happens with those materials after consumption. So three out of 10 consumers are very concerned, and their actions are based on this. They recycle their waste plastic, metal, glass. They want to know where things come from, and they buy their products based on certain values that not all companies have. And this is very important. If we intend to keep our market share, it is necessary to listen to consumers and to foresee some of our consumers' needs, but there is 70% of consumers who may be less interested in this. But this is actually not so true, because there's another study that shows that there is a 40, that 40% 40 of consumers are interested in this, but they're not yet acting strongly. And the remaining percentage is not yet so interested in these topics. So 70% of the population today is interested in knowing where food comes from, how the products are manufactured, how production takes place throughout the value chain. This is why it is becoming increasingly important to be able to answer consumers' questions 
and to be able to declare in our packaging material the original product and to have a perfect traceability program. With Nespresso, we have a very good traceability. Consumers can get to know the name and family name of the person who produced coffee in Africa for the different products. We do not have that traceability in all our products, but the trend is to reinforce this traceability. Now, a program such as the one suggested by Louis Dreyfus' company is especially important because we cannot do this on our own. Nestle, Louis Dreyfus, Syngenta, we cannot work separately. Only by working together, understanding our problems, which is the planet, we will be able to reduce our carbon footprint and we will be able to take that carbon footprint to a level that is good enough for the planet to be in a better condition or at least to go back to the conditions we used to have in the past. So that collaborative work is especially important and fundamental. Without it, things will not work. We do need to get together with a single goal, which is reducing that carbon footprint. All of us throughout the chain play a role, we contribute or we remove something. But if we want to make a difference, then we will do it through this program, which is especially valuable, can bring about quick results and measurable results. This is also important that we are able to measure results. We all talk but acting, implementing plans and activities that will help us show that we can reduce the carbon footprint. This is what we would like to prove for the sake of our planet. And Nestle Argentina is very happy to be able to participate in this collaborative project. Thank you, Giancarlo. What Giancarlo is saying is so important. I mentioned it briefly at the beginning, but I'd like to share some thoughts with you. Over the last 25 years, APRECID and many other organizations which have been going along the path of sustainability so as to improve productive systems, producing better food without neglecting social, environmental, and cultural factors. And in this respect, over the last few decades, this has been growing. There has been more awareness, more information. New initiatives have come up. And I'm saying this on my own behalf. I was seeing that very frequently this initiative would lead large companies, organizations, or public organizations to have initiatives, but individually as an organization becomes aware of the situation and decides to take action, that organization would start taking actions with a good impact, but that impact was restricted because those were individual actions. For many years, we thought, those of us working in civil society organizations, that it would be great for companies to get together and have a larger impact. As I said at the beginning, we have major representatives of the marketing chain, and I think this will really push the project and will help us achieve a larger impact. So I really applaud what Juan Carlos is saying. We'll now turn to another company, a very important company. I'm going to introduce Marcos Bradley, which is the general director for crop production with Syngenta. And Marcos, the questions are, what is important for Syngenta? Why is it part of Luis Dreyfus' regenerative agriculture program? And what is Syngenta doing as part of the program? Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me well? Well, let me thank you for being here, um, listening to our conversation. 
Truth be told, we work with many of the panelists uh, sitting next to me today, and we will be working together in a coordinated fashion. To Syngenta, sustainability stopped being something ad hoc like a CSR. Uh, we had projects, we had a budget for that, but presently sustainability as an idea, as a principle, an action is part of the business strategy. And this makes sure that sustainability happens over time. For Syngenta, if you think about it, we are a research and development company, and it takes us 10 years to launch a product from the time the molecule is discovered till we make it to the market. And thinking about uh, agriculture um, 50 years from now is uh, not sustainable. Thinking that uh, we will do it otherwise is uh, something that will not happen. That is why we started not long ago to redefine our sustainability priorities, one of them being regenerating soil. And we understand that there's a lot to be done around soil. Agriculture consists in managing a natural biological system, but being natural, it can be regenerated or degraded. That is why we talk about regeneration, because uh, as it is biological and it can be regenerated to a prior health state, we are going to improve the systems with which we work. We believe that keeping the status quo is no longer enough. We need to improve. It. We need to improve systems, and more specifically, Argentinian soils, which after 20 years of uh, no-till farming have been degraded, and we need to revert that situation. Of course, we are better off than many other countries or places, but we still need a long way to go. And this is complicated because Argentinian producers um, Argentinian farmers are diverse. 50% uh, of agriculture happens in leased farms, and it is very difficult to come out with a long-term seeding strategy. So we need to go for specific examples like these ones, where you can show a work methodology, an action plan, and final results, which actually makes sense to uh, business people who also need to see the profitability. So the way to go about it is um, as a team. And our contribution to this work is uh, the result of the work we have been doing for a number of years by assessing practices, systems with farmers working with us, whom we uh, mainstream into this initiative. And uh, these farmers are the largest and most technological ones in Argentina who have the possibility of taking a long-term approach from their companies and who are aware of the fact that they need to invest in that in order to keep their companies in the long run. And something else to contribute here is the willingness to learn and the willingness to tap into any possibility, any initiative we have to put something different to the test to keep moving forward. So there are um, scattered initiatives, and let us say that we can tap into a couple of them. Well, that results into learning. And then once again, the uh, agri-food chain is complex, long, and the way to produce positive changes is not linear. It calls for um, taking one step at a time into the right direction, and I think this one really is. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Uh, very interesting, the points you have raised, Marcos. I also believe that within the framework of a seminar like this, where um, um, thousands of people get together linked to production systems, I would even say that it's one of the most advanced productive systems in the world, even if there are s still some reluctance uh, regarding the need to improve 
um, maybe by people who are implementing improvements on a constant basis, who have uh, mainstream some improvements over the last hundred years. The goal is uh, not only to produce better, but to reduce externalities. And even if Argentina is a leading country, like uh, Juan Jose said, a couple of minutes ago, there's always room for improvement. That is part of every process, and we should not lose sight of that fact. So let us not leave that uh, leading position, because processes are always complex, dynamic, and they call for constant innovation, which is the motto of um, our host, Upper Seed. And in spite of the fact that we have actually improved um, in many aspects, and we are better off than many others in the world, there's still a lot to be done. And let me give you an example to raise awareness. Uh, No-till farming is the ground base. No questions about that. For any other of the 180 countries, this is unheard of, unthinkable. When we are saying that 90% of production of commodities is done using no-till farming. But is that a bad thing? Absolutely not. On the contrary, this positions us at the level we need to keep in order to continue moving forward. And moving on to the next topic in the panel, we should say that all these processes require know-how implementers who on site can land these programs. And along these lines, I am going to give you Diego Sivulka, known by many of you. Uh, he is the general manager of Peterson, a consulting company uh, which is uh, which engages with all the players, and it's kind of the glue binding together all the sectors, all the areas. And let me ask Diego, what the role, um, what is the role that Peterson will take around this program, and which opportunities do you envision to uh, stumble upon? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for your questions. Well, the role is exciting, that is, being on site with the farmers. I'm sure this is one of the um, areas that are the most fun, because that is where the magic happens. And this role is extremely significant uh, for this uh, launching and in terms of regenerative agriculture, because we need to work along several lines. Number one, data gathering. Not only gathering, but which data to gather. Then, what factors uh, need to be worked on? I'm going to pick on the words of some of the panelists who took the word before me. Uh, even if we understand that we are doing things right, we need to fine tune the what and the for what. Let us take it as the baseline. And sometimes it is difficult for us, given the reality in Argentina, market volatility, how to think ahead in five years, for example. But no doubt, this is the way forward. And that is where we need this guidance. Uh, why, what for? We need to take that as part of the equation, and that is a challenge. We are going to work on the soil. We need the indicators uh, to measure carbon. And, and Andres, if I'm not mistaken, well, I'm going to uh, disclose something. You come from a family of physicians. You enjoy um, running marathons. And if we translate that to our lives, you can be well. You can decide to run marathons. But what do we do? First of all, we schedule an appointment with our doctors who will order uh, some tests or and maybe you feel not so comfortable. You say, oh, so I cannot run a marathon. Yes, you can, but you need to take part of that, but understanding that maybe you need to bring down the distance you run or your diet. 
because it's the how. Then we can discuss if you want to actually win the marathon or just run it. But, well, this is uh, something that can be extrapolated to uh, farmers. And we need to think along those lines. And for me, it is a pleasure to be with you and to carry out this task. Uh, this is the path ahead, a challenge, no doubt, like with everything else. But we have the right tools, the right context. And I think uh, another uh, of your questions was about opportunities. And I can see two that are really standing out. Number one. Let us have a look at the whole chain, at the actors looking at you, uh, farmers. We, uh, panelists, are looking at you because you are at center stage. We are inviting you to be part of this path of this work, and the incentives are there, the tools are available. All the right players are ready so that you can actually take this path. Because sometimes uh, you say, we need incentives. Well, in this case, incentives are there. Sometimes you need, we need financing. In this case, funding is there. We believe this is a great opportunity. And something that is not negligible is the fact that it has to do with Argentina and Argentinian farmers. We have all, all said it. Since the 80s, Argentina is at the forefront, uh, no till farming. Uh, this is um, commonplace to all of us in Argentina, not for the rest of the world. But we still need to work on many other topics. For example, which crops, uh, which service to work on, uh, what the rotation should be, uh, how many seasons. There is a lot to work on, and Argentina deserves to keep that leading position, uh, that pole position. And we need to take every opportunity. We should not uh, rest assured that, yeah, what we are doing is fine, what we have done is fine. But the world is uh, demanding that we uh, continue to keep that leading role as part of production and agriculture. So uh, the news, uh, um, the importance given to Argentinian uh, farming and South American farming by Dreyfus um, is, is there. So tap into that opportunity. So um, because of our activities, we did talk Argentinian agriculture with other uh, crops and in other places reality is different and we cannot lose this opportunity. Thank you, Diego. Lots of important points, but I would like to share uh, two of the um, ideas you brought to the table. And I cannot escape my past in Aprasid. And I remember back in 2007 when we worked in the agricultural room, and you just said it, you um, need not to only seem but being and prove it. So if we do not measure, if we are not capable of uh, showing, displaying and proving the good and sometimes the bad we are, it is very difficult for us to focus on what to improve, how to improve and how to show it, how to make it visible. Because uh, the importance of this panel is that we, after many years following the path, are showing that those actually doing things right uh, get the recognition of uh, that which has already been scientifically proven uh, with the technologies available for farmers, which are better for productivity, for the businesses, for the environment, and that results into positive uh, impacts. Regenerative practices, and this takes me to the second point, because uh, Diego somehow opened uh, the space 
for those of you who maybe have not heard about it, what this trade food regeneration program entails. Let, let me tell you that all of you are welcome at the end of this panel to approach the representatives of the companies, the panelists from Dreyfus, and also the booth that is closed uh, outside this room. But these practices, I'm sure most of you know and maybe at some point have explored or implemented these practices. Um, everybody has been working on, they have been spreading, they have been researched on, and they are under a scientific framework that proved that they are positive and that result into benefits for farmers, companies, and society at large. In order to uh, transition all the steps um, for us producers or for, uh, for farmers to improve on a daily basis, you need the financial support. And so I will ask Arnan Bush, a manager of agribusiness with Banco Galicia, the most important bank in the um, agricultural and livestock sector in Argentina. So Hernan, let me ask you, what is the bank's vision on sustainability, what action lines have been followed on that, and how does this Luis Dreyfus regenerative program align with the bank's sustainability strategy? First off, thank you for inviting us to take part of this program. The bank has been following a strategy around sustainability for a number of years now. Of course, that started with the strategy from the financial group. Then we took it to uh, those working with us in the form of training, purporting to have them align with that strategy. We worked towards mitigating and managing operational risks we work with, and currently our bank has mitigated its carbon footprint. We are carbon neutral. But it doesn't stop there. This path actually follows, and part of the strategy is to continue along this path. So we started creating products and services on that strategy because you need to work on scope three, that is, impacting on the portfolio you work, generally speaking. And these products and services need to be aligned, and they should bring solutions to our customers. And we already have valid uh, lines. We have more ha than 100 million pesos in sustainable portfolios. There are investment funds, which is very interesting, that let uh, the public invest, for example, through the FEMA fund. Everything articulates in order to create more options. And uh, we have um, service models. And as a bank, our goal is to mitigate our footprint uh, by 2030. We're already working on our goals to reduce by 25% the impact on our finances, that is, uh, funded emissions, as we call them. And the agribusiness makes sense for us because of the status of the agricultural sector in the bank, that accounts for 20 to 25 percent of what we fund as a bank. So that is the most significant vertical for us. And this helps us understand that we need to work very attentively with our customers and if you have it with unilateral action. So we started measuring footprint and we realized that it took a great effort uh, because we realized that we bring opportunities for our customers, but doing it on a one-on-one -on -one made no sense. And every time we sit at a table with our customers, we understand that we share the same focus and same customers, and that is sustainability. We have the same focus and we understand that coming together makes more sense. And with technology, we can all work together. We understand that this is easier to share. We understood that it should be approached from an ecosystemic uh, point of view. And 
we saw that it was very interesting because it uh, brought along the same line everything we considered that had to be done because we had the same goals. And the capital follows the chain end to end. Uh, when the um, exchange rate was pegged uh, one to one, it was very difficult for us, but we understood that it was the right time to um, join that path and uh, join the um, chain because the uh, farmer is at the center and they need capital. So that is uh, the, the vision and the reason why we joined this project. Brilliant. Thank you, Hernan. Having the financial sector present in these initiatives is so important. It's also important to speak the same language. And this will help all these multi-company, multi-organization initiatives to have a larger impact looking forward. We have only a few minutes left. I'd like to know whether any member of the panel would like to share some final thoughts something you may have missed. Sometimes when you talk, you know you have limited time, but is there anything you'd like to add? Giancarlo, go ahead. This is a technical thing, but a company like Nestle, Nestle Argentina, 70% of its carbon footprint comes from its ingredients, all kinds of ingredients. Ingredients are produced by the value chain, by third parties. Our role there is advisors. We just explain what regenerative agriculture is, but we are kind of on our own when facing these suppliers. So having several players in the value chain acting on those ingredients at different points in time throughout the production chain makes all of us speak the same language. We all speak the language of regenerative agriculture, and that helps us convince farmers. And this helps them realize that there is something that might be good for the planet and for me, too. The planet is just a single planet. It needs to breathe, to regenerate. And if we don't do this, it will die and nothing will be left. So I think this initiative where value chain players acting with the same spirit towards the same goal helps to convince those of us, those who are skeptical. And it helps us explain what we want to do and why we want to do it. This is why it is so interesting for all of us to be here together talking about the same thing, because if we all do the same thing separately, then we will lose a strength that is implied in speaking the same language. I think this is the right time to launch the invitation for more growers to join the project. This starts with the growers, and we need you to be part of the change and to be part of this new path towards a better agriculture. I always repeat the same thing. You have to be and you have to prove you are that way. We know we're sustainable. We need to be able to show this to the rest of the world. And there are always things that can be improved. So we want to learn together, but we need you to join our project. Thank you. Well, we're getting to the end of our session, so I will ask Juan Jose to share some final thoughts with us since he is the organization since he is part of the organization that is inviting all of us to join them. Well, thank you. I was listening to my colleagues and as I've already said, I travel all over the world and the concept of agriculture Regenerative agriculture is already strong in the global arena. But when you go to practice, 
there are very few examples of countries that are strongly adopting this and that are generating value chain and product with regenerative agriculture with traceability. It reminds me of the time when no-till started in Argentina. Argentina was really a pioneer in no-till. And this is very much in line with the culture, the curiosity, the entrepreneur nature of Argentinian farmers. There is an opportunity here. We already have the demand, as Giancarlo said. There is an opportunity now when prices are low, and any financial incentive or bonus will help us improve that profitability. It is no, not so difficult. We already have no till talking about green cover, service crop. We all know this. There are lots of farmers who are entrepreneurs. Last year, we launched camelina as a new crop, and it has an amazing demand as ingredient for fuel. The increase from one year to the next one is sixfold. So we're speaking about using more biological inputs. There's a record number of registrations of new biological products in Argentina. In this new world, in this new deregulated world, we're seeing that there is an increasing number of biological products available to farmers. Maybe what we is missing is measuring and including that in our team, because sometimes the way in which I measure things is different from the way in which Nestle measures things or consumers measure things. And if we all measure things the same way, this will be much simpler. Everything becomes simpler. So I think the opportunity is there. And I'd like to encourage all farmers and growers who are here with us to come to our stand and try things, not either black or white. Just like 20 years ago, we tried no till. You can now start testing some hectares you may have with regenerative agriculture. I feel so proud, happy, and honored to be part of this panel. Let's have a strong round of applause for the panel. Thank you, and have a great day. Bueno, muchísimas gracias nuevamente a todos nuestros panelistas por sus valiosos. I'd like to thank all the members of the panels for their contribution, for their contrib for their commitment to regenerative agriculture. We are part of a new age in agriculture in Argentina. So l please, if you will stand up, and I will give you a document that is a certificate that proves that a change is starting today. Joint, a joint path towards a more sustainable agriculture. Bueno, a partir de este momento queda oficialmente lanzado nuestro programa. Well, this is the official launching of our regenerative agriculture program. If you are interested in getting more information and participating in the project, please come and see us at our LDC stand. Thank you a lot for having joined us for this very special launching.